one. You will hear Kevin Brown asking for information about renting an apartment through an agency. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, as you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation, and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. How can I help you? Hello. My name's Kevin Brown. I saw your advertisement in today's local paper. Apartments to let in all areas of the city. Yes, Mr. Brown. Uh, we currently have several properties available. What part of the city were you thinking of? Well, city centre, ideally. Okay. And what price range are you interested in? Um, I don't really know. What have you got? Well, uh, prices start at four hundred pounds a month, going up to a thousand pounds a month. Okay. And what's the difference? What does the price depend on? Well,、uh, the number of bedrooms mainly.、Uh -huh. The cheaper apartments have one bedroom, while the most expensive have three or four bedrooms. Okay, two bedrooms would be nice. So I'll say two bedrooms up to six hundred a month.、Mm -hmm. Do you have anything like that? Right, sir. We have.、Uh, just give me a moment, please.、Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have two properties that might interest you. One is in North Street. It's、uh, well. It's、uh, it's a very nice apartment,、uh, but it's seven hundred and fifty pounds a month.、Uh, but that includes a private parking space. Hmm. Seven fifty. That's a bit higher than I'd like to go. Really. Do you have anything less expensive? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, we have another one at six hundred and twenty-five pounds a month. Six hundred and twenty-five. All right. That sounds interesting. Where is it? It's in Cornell Road, at number twelve B. I don't know that. How do you spell it? It's C O R N E L L. It's near the park. I've never heard of it, but I'm sure I'll be able to find it on a map. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. So, would you like to see the apartment, sir? Yes, I would. I'd like to rent somewhere fairly soon.、Mm -hmm. Would tomorrow be possible? Uh, uh, sorry, I'm afraid nobody is available all day tomorrow. It's quite a busy time of year for us. I see. But if you're free later today, you could see it at five fifteen. Sure, no problem. I could manage that. Okay, so that'll be five、uh, fifteen with my colleague Jason.、Mm. He'll meet you at the apartment. That's fine. And one more thing, what do I need to provide to rent an apartment with you? What documents? That kind of thing. Yes, of course.、Um, do you have a job? Yes, I work in a travel agency. Well,、uh, a reference letter from your employer, you know, saying you work for them, and a deposit, which is one month's rent plus a fee of sixty pounds. What's that for? It's an administration fee to cover the cost of preparing the contract. Okay. And one last thing: when would this apartment be available? It's empty now, so you could move in as soon as the contract was signed. That's great. Thanks very much indeed. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Brown. <laughs> That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between a customer and a shop assistant. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. I'm interested in buying a radio. Can you help me? Yes, of course. As you can see, we have this analogue radio on special offer today for £29.99. They are normally £35. We've also got a much more modern range of digital radios. These are over here. Oh, yes. What are they? They're the new technology. This one, for example, sells at £95. The analogue radios are looking a bit old-fashioned now. Are they? What's so good about these new ones? Well, the main advantage with the analogue ones is, of course, cheapness. But the main advantage with the digital ones is the number and variety of stations you can get. Hundreds of them. All kinds of stations playing music, rock... Pop, classical, everything in fact. As well as news, current affairs, comedy, all sorts. Hmm. What about the sound quality? The quality is very good. Under certain circumstances, you can get amazing sound quality with analogue, but this is usually with very expensive radios which would normally be part of a hi-fi sound system. We have lots of those on the third floor if you're interested. Mm -hmm. The second great thing about digital is clarity. You get no interference, well, less interference than with analogue. You get a very clear and clean sound. Well, I want a radio for the flat I share with three other friends of mine. Well, you want something that will last. The analogues come with a one-year guarantee, but the digitals have a two-year guarantee, which is extendable to three years if you pay an extra £26. The main disadvantage with analogue is that it will be turned off in a few years. We don't know exactly when, but sometime. Hmm. But what about the batteries? I've heard that they use a lot of batteries. That probably is the one disadvantage of the digital radios. The battery life is not very long, but they all come with rechargeable batteries, which really solves the problem. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. So, how would you like to pay? Uh, cash. I wondered if you had a Robson store card? Do you know? I think I do. Uh, here we are. Oh, my goodness. I haven't seen one of those for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> those are the old value cards. Now you can get a super value card, which is even better value. Really? I don't know what to do. Well, I can change you onto a super value card if you want. With the super value card, you get double the standard number of points and your free credit period is longer. With your old card, you get one month's free credit, but you can get three months free credit with the new card. The interest rate is a bit higher at 22.5% rather than 18.5%, but if you're careful, you don't have to pay interest at all. Well, I'm not sure about that. It seems better in some ways. Can I continue to use my old card? You certainly can, until they withdraw them, which I'm sure they will before too long. But with the Super Value card, there are special cardholder-only days. Two per month, compared with one per month with the old card. I see. My old card gave me free delivery too. That's right. Free delivery within 20 miles. 
The Super Value card gives you free delivery up to 50 miles. Well, that sounds good. I think the old card was free too. With the Super Value, there is an initial fee of just £12, and then it's very good value. I think I'll pay cash. Very good, madam. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students, Sharon and Zhao Li, talking to their tutor about a presentation they gave the previous week. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. So, Sharon and Zhao Li, in your presentation last week, you were talking about the digital divide, the gap between those who can effectively use communication tools, such as the Internet, and those who can't. And you compared the situation here in Northern Ireland with Southeast China. Right, so... I asked you to do some self-evaluation, watching the video of your presentation and thinking about the three main criteria you're assessed by, content, structure and technique. What do you think was the strongest feature of the presentation when you watched it? Uh, Sharon? Well, I was surprised actually because I felt quite nervous. But when I watched the video, it didn't show as much as I expected. So which of the criteria would that come under? Uh, confidence? Mm, that's not actually one of the criteria as such. Zhaoli? Technique? It's body language and eye contact, isn't it? Well, I didn't think I looked all that confident, but I think that our technique was generally good, like the way we designed and used the PowerPoint slides. Hmm. So you both feel happiest about that side of the presentation? Yeah. Hmm. OK, uh, now on the negative side, uh, what would you change if you could do it again? Well, at first I'd thought that the introduction was going to be the problem, but actually I think that was OK. We defined our terms and identified key issues. It was more towards the end. The conclusion wasn't too bad, but the problem was the questions. Mm. We hadn't really expected there'd be any, so we hadn't thought about them that much. Uh -huh. OK, uh, anything else? Well, like Zhao Li says, I thought the conclusion was OK, but when I watched this on the video, I thought the section on solutions seemed rather weak. Hmm. Can you think why? Well, we explained what people are doing about the digital divide in China and Northern Ireland, but I suppose we didn't really evaluate any of the projects or ideas. It was just a list. And that was what people were asking us about at the end, mostly. You now have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. OK. Now, I also asked you to get some peer evaluation. 
from the other students. Yes, uh, well, people said it was interesting, like the fact that in China, the internet was used more for shopping than in Northern Ireland. They said sometimes it was a bit hard to understand because we were talking quite fast, but we didn't think so when we watched the video. No, it's a bit different, though, because you know all this information already. Mm. If you're hearing it for the first time, you need more time to process it. That's why signposting the structure and organisation of the talk is important. That seemed OK. No one mentioned that as a problem. Some people said that we could have had more on the slides, like some of the other groups had nearly everything they said written up on the visuals as well. Hmm. But other people said the slides were good. They had just the key points. Yes. And most people said we had quite good eye contact and body language. They all pointed out we'd overrun. They all said we were five minutes over. But we timed it afterwards on the video, and it was only three minutes. We were a bit unsure about the background reading at first, but I think we did as much as we could in the time. Anyway, no one commented on that under content. But one thing that did come out was that they liked the fact we'd done research on both Northern Ireland and China. Most other people had just based their research on one country. We managed to get quite a lot of data from the internet, although we had to do our own analysis, and we did our own surveys as well in both countries. So the class gave us best feedback for content, but it was all OK. Right. Well, that's quite similar to the feedback I'm giving you. I was very impressed by the amount of work you'd done and by your research methodology. So, actually, I'm giving you full marks for content. Five. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the structure of the presentation was good, but not quite as good as the content. So, I gave that four. And the same for technique. So, well done. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> now, the next stage is to write up your report. So, just a few pointers for you here. First of all, in your presentation, I think your ending was rather abrupt. You suddenly just stopped talking. Yeah. It wasn't a big problem, but think about your closing sentences in your report. You want to uh, round it off well. Mm. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was that I felt a very strong point was that after you'd given your results, you explained their limitations. The fact that we didn't have a very reliable sample in terms of age in China. Yes, that section. So don't forget to include that. Mm. And you had some excellent charts and diagrams. But maybe you could flesh out the literature review a bit. Mm. I can give you some ideas for that later on if you want. OK, uh, is there anything else you want to ask? Um, no, no, thank you. Thanks. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a lecture about wind energy. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. With the rising cost of fossil fuels, there's a great deal of interest these days in developing alternative sources of energy. Today, I'd like to talk about one of these, wind power. In the past couple of decades, there's been an upsurge of interest in using the wind as a source of energy. But the idea isn't new at all. People have been harnessing the power of the wind for centuries, ever since ancient peoples first used sailboats. 
In ancient China, farmers used a rudimentary sort of windmill to pump water. Wind power was used in other parts of the ancient world as well. In Persia, for example, farmers used wind-powered mills to grind their grain. During the Middle Ages, in the Netherlands, people went back to the ancient idea of using the power of the wind to move water. They used windmills to drain lakes, thereby creating more land for farming. At present, people around the world are using the wind to generate electricity. Some old methods, some new. Is this the solution to our modern energy problems? Well, as with anything, there are both advantages and disadvantages to using wind power. Let's take a look at some of the reasons to use wind power. One of the biggest problems with using fuels, such as oil and coal, is pollution. Wind power, on the other hand, is clean. It causes no pollution and therefore doesn't contribute to global warming. Another great advantage of wind power is that it's a renewable resource. Oil and coal reserves are limited, but will never run out of wind. Economics is another reason to use wind power. Using the wind to generate electricity costs less, much less, than running other types of generators. In addition, since wind turbines don't take up much land, the land around them can be used for other purposes, such as farming. There are disadvantages, however. Even though generating electricity with wind is relatively inexpensive, the technology isn't cheap. The initial costs of setting up wind turbines can be quite high. Another issue is reliability. Wind doesn't blow at a constant strength. Therefore, at times, a lot of electricity can be produced, while at others there may be little or none. Wind turbines usually have to be located in rural areas where the land is open. Their distance from cities where the most electricity is needed is another issue. Although wind is considered to be a clean source of energy, wind turbines cause their own sort of pollution. Wind turbines are usually placed in high, open areas where they're easy to be seen. Rural residents often feel that the beautiful local scenery is spoiled by the sight of the wind turbines. In addition, wind turbines aren't quiet. In fact, one wind turbine can produce as much noise as a car traveling at highway speeds. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.